Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my friend's working, but it does have a fault, Xbox 360 Slim. Uh, now if this Xbox 360 looks familiar, um, this is the one I RGH'd 3.0 on. Um, I also flashed the internal drive uh, with custom firmware so it can boot games. Uh, from the internal drive it's got an LTU2 board in there um, but like I said uh, it's developed a fault and that fault is its optical pickup uh, is failing uh, and needs replacing so yeah if you stick around I'll clock on with that what I want to do before I start stripping this down and replacing the optical pickup is I want to show you the fault uh, with this Xbox 360 Slim so I've got my favorite game and everybody else's favorite game Skyrim um, and as you can see this is a backup um, because this Xbox will boot back up because I flashed the drive if I shut the tray I don't know whether you'll hear it yep I can hear it this thing's clicking <laughs> yeah it's clicking like a good one and there we go you can see look open tray so that's the open tray error so yeah the, the optical pickup uh, in this Xbox has failed uh, what I'll do now guys is I'll put my camera on top of here and do the same again and I'll try and enhance the audio so you can hear that clicking sound because that clicking sound is very very important it's a it's a way you diagnose a dead optical pickup so yeah I'll just put my camera on top of there and do the same again What I want to do now is just talk a little bit about how the laser optical pickup uh, has failed uh, in this Xbox 360 Slim. Now what you're looking at in front of you is a optical pickup laser from a Sony PlayStation. Now this optical pickup is dead, it died a long time ago but you know it's nice to just keep around because I can still use it to take parts off the original mechanism but this actual optical pickup laser is, is dead now when i was young and i used to go around my uncle's house uh, and he taught me uh, quite a lot about electronics and, and equipment he told me when you're trying to diagnose a dead laser is listen for the clicks and if you listen to that previous video you can hear it clicking <laughs> all over the place uh, and what I want to do is just explain what those clicks are that you're hearing now if we take a look at the optical pickup laser you can see um, it's actually controlled uh, by a magnetic field so we've got a magnet here a magnet here and we've got coils and when these coils are energized we can literally move the focus uh, which is this here this is what focuses the laser 
onto the disc. Now, when you put a disc into a drive, um, it could be a CD drive, it could be a DVD drive, it could be a Blu-ray drive. They're all going to roughly work the same. Um, the only difference is obviously the wavelength uh, of the actual laser itself. But what happens is you'll put the disc into the drive. The drive will recognize the tray has been closed and it will command the optical pickup to do what's known as a focus lock and what happens is the laser lens gets moved up and down uh, to try and focus the laser onto the disc now just before I, I show you what the, the issue is I want to just show you what happens with these um, laser lenses if we take a look at this I'm going to use this as, uh, as the laser lens now the laser lens can move in two planes it can move vertically like this but it can also move horizontally like this now the vertical movement is what's known as focus the horizontal movement like this is called tracking now when we put the disc into the Xbox the first thing that happens is the, the, the mechanism will go okay the, the tray has been opened and closed check to see if there's a disc try and get a focus lock on the disc so what will happen is these coils here obviously this is a PlayStation optical pickup but the same thing will be happening is these coils here will get energized and what will happen is the focus will move up and down like this trying to focus that laser beam onto the disc now once it gets a focus lock uh, it will stay in that position and then the tracking will take over and it will start tracking the disc so if you've got wobble the, you'll see this moving up and down as well um, but then what happens is depending on what type of disc it is in the Xbox it will probably read what's known as a table of content and it will just look to see if it's an Xbox game um, then it will start reading security sectors and then it will start booting the game um, you know so it goes through its authenticity of the disc uh, and then the, the game will boot so here's what's happening in our Xbox and, and this is what the problem is and this is where my uncle's advice comes into uh, effect where listen for the clicks right so what's happening is we're putting our game uh, into the Xbox the Xbox drive energize these coils and try and get a focus lock on the disc now because our laser has got to the point where it's dead basically or, or, or it's dying it's at a, a really bad point where the actual power is nowhere near good enough uh, to get a focus lock and it can't do that what's happening is the coils get energized and this thing moves up to try and get a focus lock but what happens is it reaches its maximum uh, and then the drive will de-energize the coils and try again and what happens is when those coils get de-energized this is what happens and did you hear that click what happens is the actual focus bottoms out uh, on the bottom of the pickup uh, and I'll show you that again so put the disc in the the mechanism will energize it the coils will energize it will try and focus optical pickup to get a focus lock um, it will reach its maximum uh, the, the device knows okay it's reached its maximum de-energize the coils the coils will de-energize and bang you get that click and that's what's happening that click I'll simulate it is, is just the laser lens bottoming out uh, against the bottom Of the optical pickup uh, and that's the problem because our laser diode has failed or failing um, it's not as powerful as it was uh, when it, the device tries to get a focus lock so I'll simulate it without the this thing moves up to try and get a focus lock 
um, it reaches its maximum the device goes okay you've reached the maximum de-energize the coils and it just lets go and that's that bottoming out you hear is it's just that happening now even if you've got a good optical pickup you can still hear that bottoming out of the actual laser lens that generally happens when you put a bad disc into the drive uh, so your optical pickup laser could be perfectly fine but you put that crappy disc in there say you burnt it too quick or it's really crappy media cheap media you'll get that clicking sound um, the best thing to do if you hear that sound is try different media right um, so if you've got a DVD try other DVDs um, just to see if that clicking sound uh, is there but that's a really good indication that the problem with the optical pickup that clicking that this clicking sound that's what my uncle told me to listen out for um, because that's a, a really really great sign to say you know this thing's not getting a focus lock and the lasers died also uh, another thing about optical pickups guys is they can fail differently um, what i mean by that is it's not always the laser diode that will fail um, generally you can normally tell um, when an optical pickup laser diode is failing because it's gradual um, so you know it may take up to six months for the the laser to show signs of failing and then it's got to the point where it's just not reading discs anymore uh, and that can happen like over a six month period um, but generally if you get one of these and it fails like something catastrophically goes wrong and it just fails generally what happens there is these coils uh, are blown um, because it's very easy uh, to blow these coils and I, I can give you a tip that my uncle gave me is never ever use a CD cleaning kit and the reason for that is if you look at a CD cleaning kit they have little brushes on them uh, and what they do is they go over the laser lens but the problem with that is if these coils are energized when those brushes go over and it's pushing down on that laser lens you can damage the coils so never ever clean one of these uh, with a CD cleaning kit because you can damage the coils the best thing to do if you want to clean one of these is is I'll show you I'll demonstrate it uh, get yourself a cotton bud like this get yourself some IPA I'm just gonna put a little bit of IPA I mean this is a dead laser but I'm just demonstrating how to do this um, what you want to do is make sure there's no power going to the optical pickup in any way because you don't want these coils energized when you're cleaning and what you want to do is you want to take your q-tip and gently you don't want to go crazy you just want to go gently and wipe the laser lens like that and you can actually see the tracking that's tracking you can see that side to side movement up in there that's tracking Uh, and that's pretty much how you should clean uh, a laser lens. Do never, ever, ever use a CD cleaning kit. Because if you do, and these co coils are energized, and you start moving this uh, optical lens up and down, you can damage the optical pickup. One other thing with this drive as well, guys, I've noticed is it's a bit sluggish. Uh, with its tray eject you see how sluggish that is do that again yeah that's a little bit sluggish uh, now that can be two things I thought it needs a good service and a good clean inside uh, and the rails the eject rails need um, greasing or the eject belt uh, is, is failing it's getting a bit slack um, but I've got plenty of belts uh, for this uh, so what I'll do is why I'm in there replacing that optical pickup laser I'll give it a good service and I'll also replace 
the eject belt that's in there. It's time to get inside this Xbox so I can replace the faulty optical pickup blazer. Now I'm not going to film me stripping down the Xbox. The reason for that guys is I've already got a video, actually two videos of this very Xbox where I RGH it and I flash the internal drive. Um, both those videos I show how to strip down this very Xbox. So all I'll be doing is just going over old ground. So yeah, I'm just going to strip this down and get down to the drive so I can replace the faulty optical pickle laser. And as you can see, I've got the DVD-ROM drive at the Xbox 360 Slim. If you look carefully, you can see it's a Hitachi LG unit and the model number is a DL. 10N uh, which is the model that goes into the slims um, but if you look carefully you can see this one was manufactured March uh, 2011 so what's that 13 years uh, the optical pickups uh, been in this uh, driving it's it's just failed um, I've seen optical pickups last a lot less than 13 years uh, so yeah this one's not done too bad yeah, but anyway, I need to get in this thing uh, and replace the optical pickup. What I want to do now is just quickly go over um, a little bit of a pain you can run into with one of these Attachy LG DL10N DVD-ROM drives. Now, the problem with them is there are two different types optical pickups that can go into the drive the problem with having two is they're not compatible with each other so if you've got one of them you can't swap it for the other one you have to get the right model and there's two models and I just want to go over what those two models are now the first model is known as the hop 150x dash g2r and the second model is a HOP 15 XX G2R2. So you're going to have one of those two in your drive. The problem with that is you're not going to know which one you've got until you get into your drive, um, which is a pain in the backside, really. You know, if they just made one optical pickup for the drive, it'd be very easy to repair these things. But if you get one of these drives, one of these Hitachi LG DL10Ns, you can't just assume which one it is. You have to go in uh, and find which model optical pickup you have. And remember, they're not interchangeable. You can't swap one for the other. It just simply won't work. So sadly, you have to go into the drive and find out what model optical pickup you have. Now, I've already done it on this one. I know the model, um, I've been in there and seen what it is. So I've got the new optical pickup. What I'm going to do now is show you how you distinguish uh, which one you've got. I'm just going to take it out of its packaging. Now if we turn it over and we look at the back, I'll just move that a little bit closer. We take a look here. We look at the very bottom set of numbers. You can see this one is a 15 double X. Remember it started with H O P and it's either a 15 zero X or a 15 double X. And you can see this one is a 15 double X. Now the next thing you need to look for is on the PCB. Now I already know this being a 15 double X there should be a set of numbers just here next to the ribbon, uh, the connector for the ribbon. You can see it just here. It says G2R2. So that's what you need to look for. Those two identifying markers. So I know this is a 15 double X. If I turn it over, that number should be G2R2. And you can see there it is a G2R2. Now, if this was a 15 zero X, 
obviously it would say this very last number would be a 15 0 x and I would turn it over and confirm that by seeing G2R written just here um, so yeah this is a 15 double x and it's a G2R2 optical pickup the final thing I want to show you about this optical pickup is you can tell this is a brand new optical pickup there are no marks on it um, there's no signs of it being used before it's basically what I'm saying is not a pulled unit the things to look for if you're looking for a pulled, pulled unit is look to see if there's any grease uh, that is in where the sled rail goes uh, same here on this one on this side look to see if you can see any grease look to see if you can see any dust that's another good sign um, that it's a pulled unit now I know this is a new unit because it still has its anti-static blob there what this does is it grounds the laser diodes there's actually two laser diodes in this there's one for the CD side of the optical pickup and there's one for the DVD side of the optical pickup and what this little blob does is it grounds this laser diodes that are in this optical pickup uh, so you can't really add static to them it you know you use basically a sta anti-static protection blob that's what that basically is now what you'll see me do is the final thing you'll see me do when I put this into the drive before I put the the cover back on what I'll do is I'll get my soldering iron like this and I'll just come along and I'll just remove that anti-static blob uh, and then that's the optical pickup all ready to go I uh, put the lid back on uh, and we're all off to the races as they say <laughs> time to get inside this Xbox 360 Slim DVD ROM drive the first thing I need to remove is the dampening rubber this just dampens the drive inside the Xbox now the next thing you would need to do um, but I've already done it if you look just here you can see there is a dust cover now what you need to do is you need to take a craft knife like this and you see this here you just need to slit it on that side and slit it on that side because what will happen is you'll take the screws out and then you'll be trying to get it open and you'll be going why is it not coming open it's because of that there so uh, yeah, let's get these screws out okay now the final two screws are here and here now this is going to be fun trying to get this out on the camera the bottom panel removed and flip it over and hopefully we should be able to remove the top panel
Now before I can remove the optical pickup, I have to remove the LTU2 board on the opposite side. So to do that, I'm just going to unclip the optical ribbon cable like that. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to remove the spindle motor. I'm going to remove the eject motor ribbon. And finally, this one here is the spindle motor, uh, sorry, no, the um, sled motor for the optical pickup. So, yep, they, they remove now. All I have to do is come along, pull this little clip here, and I can swing it open. And there we go. We've got the LTU2 board removed. Now to remove the optical pickup is actually very easy. There's just one screw you have to remove. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the sled forward and the screw that we need to remove is just here. So I'm going to unscrew that. That will allow us to lift out the optical pickup and there we go that's the optical pickup removed very very easy so now if we take a look at this optical pickup we can see it is indeed a 15xx and we can confirm that as we turn it around and we look at the PCB we can see the G2R2 so that confirms what laser we have now what I need to do now is just remove this plastic piece here and transport it over to the new optical pickup Got my new optical pickup from Z Labs. Let's transfer that little plastic piece over to the new one. And as you can see, if we take a look, this is a 15XX, and we take a look at the PCB. We can confirm that because it says. G2R2. So to get this onto the new optical pickup, just there, screw this in. Don't want to over tighten it, that should do. And that's it. Time to get this in the drive. Time to get the new optical pickup in there. It's very easy. It's just the reverse of taking the old one out. So what I've got to do is just come here. or thread this through there like that. Now there's a trick to doing this. You've got to hook the plastic bit there like that. I'm oh, sorry, got that in the way. And then what I need to do is just hold it up and push that down while I get that locked into place. And now you can see that new optical pickup is locked into place. Um, so what you need to do is just make sure you get this in first uh, before you push it down. Because if you don't, obviously the sled uh, is not going to move. Uh, and I apologize for the dog barking, guys. There's nothing I can do. It's my neighbor's dog. It's one of those dogs that if a squirrel farts in a tree, uh, it just goes mental. <laughs> so what I need to do now uh, is put the old screw back in there. Remember always go back, you hear the click. There's a click. 
always do that because you don't want to create new threads if you, if you hear that click you know you're going into the old thread and I'm just going to screw that down and that's it that's the new optical pickup installed now the new optical pickup is installed what I want to do is I want to take some of my Fataba servo gear grease that I swear by guys this stuff is really really good and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along I'm just going to re-grease these rails because obviously we've taken the old optical pick out and we've replaced it and it's going to be dry so this will just add some grease to the new optical pickup sled rails I'm just going to turn that over and do the same for the opposite side there we go just come in here put a little block there up there and turn it around and put some there and that's it and just one more little one I want to do just move that spindle motor ribbon out the way and I just want to put a little more on the sled motor screw that's what this is called the sled motor screw and there we go that's it that's the new optical pickup installed not too difficult now i need a belt for the eject mechanism so uh, hopefully i can find one uh, within this lot <laughs> I think I've got enough belts. <laughs> what I wanted to do now, guys, was give this a really good service. Um, but to be honest, um, it's in pretty good condition. It's not very dirty. Um, I don't see how the sled draw rails will need. Uh, re-greasing because you can see look there's grease already on them so what I'm suspecting is it's the belt uh, that needs replacing now to get the tray out is very easy if you take a look at the side here there's a little catch and all you do is just grab your finger in it like this and you pull it and there you go it pushes the tray out and that allows you to remove the tray and obviously I've gone too far but there you can see there's the just there is the eject belt so I'm gonna take this off and we'll take a look at it see what it looks like and yeah it's warped uh, and it's gone a bit egged shaped I'll show you the size it should be that's the size it should be so uh, you can clearly see uh, this one's slackened off uh, and it's gone all egg shaped and that's what's causing the the drawer not to open properly so i'm just gonna replace that super easy let's come along get the new belt into the wheel trying to do this on camera is a bit tough there we go get it in the groove and we'll go round the eject motor and there we go we've got a new belt now what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a good grease in anyway I might as well wire in there let's get my if I can get it out the tube get my gear grease again I'm gonna get a little brush like this and what I'm gonna do is get some on the brush like that you don't want to go crazy with it guys because remember the more you grease it the more dust you can attract so 
I'm just going to put some grease there. You can already see it's already there, but I might as well put some new on there, put some there, put some there. Let's turn it around. Do the opposite side. Some there, there, and there. Now, if you really want to go to town, what you can do is you can just put some there as well. Might do the opposite side. You don't need much on this part. And also, you take a look underneath. Turn it around. You can put some in this little channel as well, like that. And if you really want to go to war, <laughs> you can put some in these teeth. Man, that should be enough. And there we go. This drive is ready to put back together let's get the LTU2 board back in so the first one I like to do is the sled motor it's gonna come in pop that in there and just hold it with my finger while I shut the catch there we go, that's the, the catch shut. Then what I can do is I can push it underneath like that. Make sure my eject motor and spindle motor are out of the way. Make sure my optical pickup ribbon is out of the way. I'm just going to make sure it's in there. And we should just be able to finesse it back in. There we go, that's it, we're in. What I'm going to do now is just put in the spindle motor ribbon. Yep, that's that one in. Put the eject motor in. There we go, that's the eject motor in. Flip it over. I want to make sure this is fully down, it is. I'm just going to plug in the ribbon for the optical pickup. I can find the hole. <laughs> oh, I've shut it. It's been a pain. There we go. We're in. And we'll shut the catch. And there we go. That's that back together. Is I've been working around this, so I want to give it a, a quick clean. And all I'm doing is just putting some alcohol on a Q-tip, and I'm just going to come along and gently wipe the optical pickups focus uh, remember you want to do this gently guys you don't want to go to war on this thing uh, there we go and that's that cleaned uh, just a quick interlude from the future <laughs> uh, just to let you know um, I thought I recorded it, but I didn't, so I'm inserting it here. Um, I forgot to record the bit where I removed the anti-static blob uh, from the optical pickup. Um, I really thought I recorded it, guys, but I didn't, so um, I apologize about that. Um, yeah, uh, that's where I would have done this right now. I would have got that blob out the way uh, and then 
was ready to start buttoning up uh, the Xbox DVD ROM drive. So yeah, just a quick message from in the future and, and a quick glimpse. It's working great. <laughs> Optical pickups been replaced, drive's been serviced, I've replaced the eject belt. Time to get this back together. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to start with the actual top and flip it over. Just double check, make sure everything is in properly before I put the lid back on. Everything looks good. Pop the lid back on and let's screw these screws back in. Let me get my other screwdriver. And there we go one repaired and serviced dvd rom drive for the xbox 360 slim let's get it back in the xbox 360 slim and give it a test so as you can see i've got the xbox 360 slim partially back together i'm going to test this before i obviously put it all back together so let's power on the Xbox and yeah we're getting a boot RGH3 boots first time every time <laughs> just let the dash uh, come up there we go we've got the Xbox dashboard let's eject DVD ROM drive oh that's a lot better <laughs> that's a lot better straight away uh, so I'm going to take my favourite game and everybody else's favourite game uh, Skyrim and as you can see it is a backup so I'm going to pop that in the tray close the lid and hopefully we get a, a decent I can hear it spinning up yep there's spin up play game show me the icon Winner, winner. <laughs> so yeah, looks like we've got a fully working Xbox 360 Slim and a brand new laser in the DVD ROM drive. So yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spend 10 minutes putting this all back together. And when I've done that, I'll come back and wrap up the video. And as you can see, we're all back together. So let's power on the Xbox by the controller. RGH 3.0 boots <laughs> first time. Every time, just wait for the dash uh, to load up. Now normally this should boot Aurora, but my friends didn't give me the R drive uh, with the actual 
Xbox because I don't really need it. I just need the Xbox. I don't want the hard drive as well. Um, all he's got to do when he gets it back, get it back, is plug his old hard drive in it, and it will just boot a roller again because obviously it's RGHed. Uh, so let's open the tray. Wonderful, uh, a lot, lot better. So let's get back up version of Skyrim in there. Shut the tray. Uh, hopefully we should get spin up uh, and then the game icon there's a spin up play game next should be the icon there's the icon winner winner so let's press A to boot the game and the drive should spin up again and hopefully you can hear that it has done and now we should get Skyrim and there we go we got Skyrim so yeah there you go guys hope you liked the video if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one winner winner fix the DVD ROM drive in this Xbox 360 Slim placing the optical pickup and fix the belt, uh, the eject as well by replacing the belt. Catch you next time guys.